Hey, Katrina, how are you doing today? Just fine, and you? Doing well, thank you, thank you. So uh, to start off, I just want to make sure that I have your permission to record for educational purposes today. Yes, I do. Okay. Yes, you do. Excuse me. Thank you, thank you. And um, I do want to ensure that this will this session is confidential, um, and you. only the necessary um, administrators that need to be able to review this recording will be able to. Okay. Thank you. Perfect. So um, we have you and I have had a session before you you being the coach and me being the client and I, I remember how powerful that was and so I'm I'm well, it's I'm happy to be able to kind of uh, get an opportunity to coach you and and feel Thank like you. I'm, I'm uh, returning the favor <laughs> so to speak <laughs> yeah so um, yeah absolutely now um, is there something in particular either a goal or a challenge that you'd like to focus on um, today for this session. Actually, there's a challenge, yeah. and it probably feeds into a goal. So um, I'm not sure if you know, in addition to working full-time and trying to get into coaching, I'm also trying to get into real estate. Or shall I say, I've done a couple of transactions, so I'm still kind of new at it. And... The way it works is you get leads, and off these leads, um, if you if if they end up purchasing a property, that's how you get paid. Mm -hmm. And my challenge is, I had a lead. He was interested in one property, and the property he was interested in was under contract already with someone else. And so I suggested a different property. I spoke with the builder, and the builder said, no problem. I'll put you down on the contract because I know you're working with me. And I said, that's fine. I, they were scheduled for the showing on Tuesday. He told me I didn't have to show up for it, and I said, that's fine. And they went under contract and excluded me from the contract, which means – I lost five thousand dollars. <laughs> so that's the challenge. And so because the guy did not sign the buyer's representation form, I almost don't have well not so much as that the builder is saying he's not changing the contract since I didn't have one. Never mind he verbally agreed to put me on the contract. And I sent him the required information to make sure I was on the country. He said that he communicated to the individual, my client at the time, that it made no difference one way or the other if I was um, on the contract or not. And, and he said that he let him know he wasn't going to change the contract. So what was clear to me is they had a pretty lengthy conversation about me being included or excluded from the contract. So my challenge is how to proceed from here. What do I do next? Because $5,000 is a lot of money. <laughs> and... Not only is five thousand dollars a lot of money, five thousand is not just my money because the lead came through an organization and they're supposed to get a percentage. I have a broker and they're supposed to get a percentage. And so at the end of the day, you're not just excluding me, you're excluding how all this came about. And, and it's frustrating. It's frustrating because you're really limited. <laughs> you're limited because he didn't sign the buyer's rep. You're limited because the builder has remade. And I'm limited because I can complain to the division manager but I don't know the impact that would have 
because I had in my own list of things to do is to reach out to them to do open houses, to drive more business towards their property, which is essentially what I did for this one property. The one you wanted wasn't available, so I suggested this one. And and you purchased it. So it's it's just frustrating. I understand. I get that. Yeah, thank you for sharing that, Katrina. Um, and I do want to reflect some of this back uh, of what I'm hearing. And so um, ultimately, there's this sense of frustration that you're you're dealing with right now because of this circumstance of um, not having signed the buyer's agreement. And of course, uh, a, a, a lead, really, I mean, uh, verbally a client that you were uh, assisting in purchasing a property and who did purchase a property. And now you find yourself in a position where you are not being uh, fairly or adequately compensated for your efforts. Exactly. Yeah. And so um, a question that I did have for you, um, because you are in association with, um, of course, the organization, you have a broker, um, and you do have some, you do have uh, a professional support system as well. Um, have they assisted you or given you any um, strategies in which uh, you would um, pursue this, this situation? You mentioned a few things that you thought of doing. Mm-hmm. I'm wondering if they also uh, had the opportunity to, to support you in this. Yes. Um, the, the first thing she uh, advised me to do was contact him and ask him if they were under contract, which we knew that the property was under contract because we can go into the MLS system and see that it's under contract. I just couldn't see if it was under contract with my buyer. And so I contact him and I did reach out and he said, in fact, that they're on the contract. And that's where I got the additional information where I wasn't in- included. And so I called her back and I informed her and she uh, advised me to escalate it and send, uh, contact his um, broker and contact our broker and let them know what has transpired. And I read her the text message where I was in communication with him. We confirmed that I was working with my, I sent him a copy of my IABS, which is information about broker services. And I confirmed that the listing, uh, excuse me, the showing was scheduled for Tuesday. And she says, well, that's enough to show that the buyer was registered with you. And she says, I would um, t- uh, inform the brokers because they would not want uh, other realtors to be, to find out that they are reneging on agreements with realtors. And so that's my next step is just, it's frustrating because it's about what you can and can't control. Because I cannot make them put me on the contract, just like I couldn't make him sign the buyer's agreement, even after sending it, even after saying that he was going to sign it, even after, you know, orchestrating to make sure he was there and get and got a show in at a time that was comfortable for him. So I can't make them commit or pay for work that I've done because I don't have that. And another thing that's frustrating that's beyond my control is this guy said that he would include me, but he didn't. And so it's like, you gave me a verbal agreement. And in response, I sent you required information. I didn't just send it just to be put my information out there. And so it's frustrating because I can't make the client do what needs to be done. I can't make the buyer do what needs to be done. And what's even more frustrating is I can't get paid. 
is absolute if the brokers don't override, it's absolutely nothing I can do. I get that. Yeah, I understand that. And also what I'm hearing if I may share is that um because this is a you know this real estate business that you are are wanting to take off, of course, for obvious reasons to you know to make a living and whatnot. Um you know this is a uh in one one respect this could be perceived as a very challenging start in something that you're really trying to develop as well. And so um let me ask you Katrina um with this level of frustration that you're feeling with this situation in this session today how what would be the best outcome what would it look like for you to manage some of that frustration what would have to happen for you in order for you to not feel so frustrated in this situation i um i honestly think that i will be a little frustrated because it's fresh and when i say it's fresh it's like literally within the last right before class started right before we signed on and i think what's most helpful is just really coming to the resolve that this is beyond what has happened is beyond my control and maybe looking at preventative maintenance what can be done to make sure this does not happen again because when it comes to when you're expecting to get paid and you don't get paid that's frustrating and it's not so much that i made plans for the money or anything like that because i didn't could i use it yes i definitely have some needs that could be addressed but i wasn't planning from that perspective what i was what what i do need to do i guess for myself is if if a buyer cannot sign the buyer's representation agreement in 48 hours then i cut my time and i think that will help me at the end of the day and i think that's really ultimately what my request is and so we've and and i and i know we're coaches trained coaches in training we transition so this is my challenge my challenge is I'm frustrated but this is what I need to do and I need to identify how to prevent the frustration um because all frustrations can't be yes there's always going to be something so if i look at this and say identify the lessons learned and then identify ways to deal with it i just got burnt <laughs> i just got burnt by a client and a builder there's nothing i can do about it so what can i do and so what can i do to guard against this in the future and it starts with what i am in control of and that is who i work with and if you cannot sign that buyer's agreement within the first 48 hours then we cannot work together Yeah, I get that. That's that's a very important insight, uh, Katrina. The the security of having that buyer's agreement signed within those eight hours. And um, I also want to acknowledge you for the insight of you know the the silver lining, you know, in every cloud, in the sense that you you are seeing a lesson from this situation mm-hmm. and um, the possibility and potential for. uh preventative measures going forward which is really really important and uh, especially especially when it comes to contracts and and agreements and um and verbal versus written and and so I know it, it's clear that you you recognize the importance of that and I do want to acknowledge you for that and um so it sounds like for you the the 
one of the next steps, and you can, of course, correct me um, as needed, one of the next steps would be for you to put that strategy in place, which is having that buyer's agreement um, pretty much at, at the initiation of any um, business partnership, so to speak, yeah? Uh, yes, because, and as I sit here and think about it, I do this buyer's representation meet and greet type meeting. I've started doing it where we go through the uh, PowerPoint and I offered it to him and he declined it. And he told me just send a documentation and he'll sign it. And that really should have been a red flag for me. So now I know is when I meet you within 24 hours, but within the first couple of hours, this is the information I need to draft up the package. The second thing is you have to attend this Zoom meeting brief because if you don't, you're going to be missing vital information. And that's important. And then upon the conclusion of that presentation, that meet and greet, you're going to get the buyer's representation. And from that point, you have 48 hours. Absolutely nothing else will transpire until you get that signed. If you have questions about that, I'll answer. But there will be no showings. There will be no virtual tours. There will be no searching. And it's, it's just me protecting my business. And it, it may sound harsh, but that's a, decision I have as a business decision I have to make for myself and my business. See that. Um and if I may share, uh yes. you know there's that there's that old adage, you know, it's not it's not personal, it's business, you know? Yes. And I heard you um speaking of the other um, your other associates and the other people that are involved with every transaction in every business partnership. And so I know that um, based on what, what you've said, um, I know that um, it's also important for you to be in support of those people as well. And so it's a, it's a, you know, I know that in real estate, it's a, well, and in every other business that for that matter, it's, there's a team, a big team aspect to it and so support and be supportive. You know, and I know I can tell from, from having interacted with you previously and now that you are, you, you, you like to hold that supportive role. And of course, at the same time, you want to be supported just like, just like anyone else. And so, um, yes, based on, based on this circumstance and based on your insights with, uh, some of your next action steps, uh, I can see that you will have the professional boundaries in place to, essentially prevent this from happening in the future. Yes. That's really, really important. Um, is there anything else you'd like to share? Anything else you'd like to, um, in terms of uh, additional action steps or additional support that you think and feel you might need in executing this strategy? I think once I, once I put it into place, then I need to measure the effectiveness of it. So what I need to do from, I see these steps is I need to measure. I got this client, this lead on this day. We had our, we sent our initial invite at this date. We had our initial buyers meet and agree on this date. They did or did not sign the buyer's rep agreement. Then that can show me with respect to all my leads who I'm securing. I, I can get a lot of information from a business perspective from there. Yes. Because I can measure the time. I can see if things are moving through the pipeline and I can see if things are getting stuck in the pipeline or what things are just dropping out of the pipeline. So some people may not sign in 48 hours, but things may have come up 
and it may show up a day or two later. I don't I I won't decline them, but what I won't do is I won't push them to I won't push them the way I would push a new lead that I'm trying to build a uh, introduction to to get them to the market mm-hmm. There's a there's a difference. If I've had this conversation with you and I've sent you the buyer's agreement, after 48 hours, if it hasn't been signed, then I'm not going to push you to sign it. And if you sign it 72 hours later, I'm not going to deny you as a client because you did sign it. And then if you are just a new client and we never met, then that's like cold calling. Calling. I'm going to reach out to you until I get some type of yes or no. And I, I think that gives me the clarity that I need just for, I would say, just for doing lead management. That sounds like a, a, a very effective system, you know, uh, once it's fully established. And what I was hearing as well is that um, within that system, you'll have a very clear algorithm, if I may say of, you know, you have, you have a lead and then you know exactly where to place that lead based on your interactions with that, um, mm-hmm. you know, whether they'll eventually become a, a client or whether you, you know, you, you move them along in a different direction. But uh, having that system in place, it sounds like will be very comforting and clarifying for you and how you're going to deal with um, whether it's a, a, a cold client or a warm lead or um and so, yeah, it sounds like you have a pretty good, pretty good system in, in place. And when would you like to start implementing the system? Actually, I'm going to work on that this weekend. I'm going to work on that this weekend. I, that's what I just wrote down. Okay. Because we, yeah, that's what I just wrote down. Great. And, of course, let me know if there's anything, you know, um, even beyond this session uh, mm-hmm. we can do together, discuss together. Um, and it sounds like we've gotten we've gotten your 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 next steps, which is which is really important. And um, again, Katrina, I want to acknowledge you because this is a uh, this something that has started as a very frustrating situation, circumstance, feeling as though you know it was an unfair um, treatment. Essentially, um, you're actually finding the the will. I want to say and you're using your internal resources to create a whole system out of this, which is really, really powerful, actually. And um, that is how a lot of contractual agreements are created because of all these different what ifs, you know. And so it sounds like you have a a powerful system in place that you're going to be implementing um, this weekend. So I want to commend you for that. And um, these last couple of minutes of the session, um, is there anything else you'd like to – um, talk about or discuss, or are you feeling pretty complete with this request? I am feeling complete with this request. I got the clarity that I needed. I think I just needed to kind of talk it through. You know, it was a, I was presented with a challenge, the challenge, recognizing that the challenge was beyond my control, was very key and crucial, and the shift in mindset that I needed, and that is now because it's beyond your control, what is within your control and what can you do about it? Yeah. And committing to implement that system is ultimately what's most important. And we've arrived at that. Perfect. Perfect. That's a great, um, I hear that. And uh, I, I have all the confidence that you're going to, you're going to hold that mindset uh, in such a way that you'll be able to, make the best out of this situation as well. Yeah. yeah. Awesome. awesome. So we'll go ahead and complete this. Yeah, absolutely. You're very welcome. Thank you for sharing. And uh, I'm glad that we were able to uh, create some clarity in this session for you. And please let me know, again, if there's anything that we can do um, to even deepen, you know, to further deepen that clarity as well moving forward. Okay? Okay. Thank you. Welcome. So I'll go ahead and complete this recording now.